Valentine's Day is upon us, fellas, so make sure you're prepared for wherever that night may take. Our friends and sponsors today, Manscaped, who are the world leaders in men's below-the-waist grooming, they're here to tell you that you need the best tools for the job so you're not caught out on your special day. Two million men are already trusting Manscaped products to groom. Make sure you're one of them. Your girl can't think of a gift to get you this year? Tell her that's the gift for you and for her. Nice. Now the best way to get started is with Manscaped Perfect Package 3.0 to get you looking, smelling, and dare I say it, tasting nice? Ooh. I may have added that in there. Perfect Package 3.0 is headlined by the trimmer, the Lawnmower 3.0, which is equipped with advanced skin safe technology and a ceramic blade so you don't cut your nuts. It's even waterproof, which prevents you making a mess in the bathroom floor and in the sink, especially when it's time for Cupid to shoot that shot. Ew. And let's be real, we've smelt the worst down there before. That's why I'm thankful for their Crop Preserver and Crop Reviver. These products keep our boys from sweating, smelling and sticking. So on the off chance I get a date, I'll be smelling good. Crop Preserver. Earlier you were talking about doing some crop dusting. Is that the same thing? I can confirm that Bush's nuts smell better than ever with the aid of that Crop Preserver. The manly scent is attractive and will help set the mood, if you know what I mean. And on top of that, the trimmer allows you to be extra stylish. This mustache is not the only mustache on my body right now. The good thing about the Perfect Package 3.0 is that it comes with other gifts as well, such as Manscaped's official boxes, which as far as I'm concerned are the comfiest boxes I've worn in a long time. I'd have to agree with that. Yeah, we've both worn the same pair at the same time. That's how <laughs> stretchy and good they are. Ooh, don't know if that'll make it. And complete your grooming game with the new refined cologne signature scent by Manscaped. With the same signature scent that's in all Manscaped formulas, this cologne is a perfect complement to co this collection. To quote the baby, she liked it to smell cologne. Just signed a deal, Lamone. Yeah, yeah, huh? I know what I want, good. Etc. Etc. This is the perfect package for your perfect package. Get 20% off and free shipping using the code TRUEFOOTY20 at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you. That's it, Bush. So if you didn't catch it the first time, go to manscaped.com. You will get 20% off with the code TRUEFOOTY20, all caps, all one word. Not only would you be getting a great product, but you'd be helping fund TRUEFOOTY for a big 2021 AFL season. Thanks, guys. Enjoy the podcast. Hope you get a Valentine's Day date. Me too, buddy. All right, all right, all right. True Footy Podcast 70, would you believe? One podcast ASP after Sexy Podcast 69. <laughs> uh, we're joined once again by our good friend Lenny. How are you, mate? Good, thanks. Um, thanks for having me again. Oh, my, our pleasure. Again, Absolutely. you're probably like one of the most like, asked for guests we've had, <laughs> um, as I tell you every podcast, uh, but uh, you're, you're the draft guru. Yeah. And, uh, and that's why in uh, late January, when we're struggling for AFL content, Views are um have dried up more than Busher on a Saturday night. <laughs> um, there we are more than the ladies when they see Busher on a Saturday <laughs> night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, exactly. Um, that has driven all the thoughts out of my head. <laughs> um, yeah, no, no. What we're going to do today as uh, as a little bit of a fun podcast. Um, as opposed to all the other non-fun ones, <laughs> is we're going to do a redraft of the 2001 AFL Super Draft because we were doing a series of this um, sort of like through December. I did a couple of vids with Drew's redrafting uh, former drafts, but the 2001 draft, as you know, Lenny, is... Um, the greatest, is, probably. Yeah, considered pretty much the greatest uh, draft in terms of like both top-end talent, but also like the depth of talent and even all the way through the rookie draft, some of the players that were picked up were ridiculously good oh absolutely um i actually can't think of a draft that rivals it maybe oh nine off the top of mm. my head maybe but um yeah you just look at as you were saying the depth and the quality of players that um came through the rookie draft and it's just incredible do you remember where you were during the 2001 draft <laughs> oh i would have been about six years old and yeah. not had a clue that a draft was actually occurring to yeah, be yeah. honest because i was gonna say that because i was gonna say we were about six when it happened and like not i can read like hear 30 35 names in this draft of like people i've heard of considering mm. i was six when these guys made their start that's insanely some impressive. of these guys played long careers as yeah. well like are any of them still playing well, gary ablett just retired yeah um, he's probably the last one he might be the last one actually i'm not oh no sandalands yeah. is on the list so um sandy's retired oh of course he has <laughs> yeah but when did he retire was a year that, or two ago oh uh, is it okay then my yeah. point sucks but either way um, <laughs> we got some really good longevity out of this draft um yeah i was joking about the uh can you remember where you were thing i was actually living in thailand at that time i literally had not discovered afl yet so oh. this is uh, a fair way back in in history but um yeah so the idea today would be uh of course to go through 
Uh, well, we're going to pretty much do like a top 25, top 30 or so. Yeah. We'll just go around the room and like we'll redraft it and people can see like the depth of talent that actually oh, came yeah. from this this year. Um, so I've got it in front of me here. This draft class, draft class rather featured five club captains, 17 200 game players, 29 100 gamers and multiple all Australians. Um, and then I th- believe that... There's about five Brownlow medalists, five Norm Smith medalists, and 21 players won flags. Wow, is and that right? And a total of 39 premierships. Yes, wow, that's incredible. Um, yeah, so as you can see, like, one of the most decorated draft classes as well. I, yeah. I don't know what would come second if you had to rank draft classes. It's been extremely in-depth and thorough exercise you'd have to yeah. do to rank strength of each draft, but I think some strong ones that come to mind, uh, like you said... Um, 2009 2009 sorry yeah did you say off 04 in on air yeah. or not I think you said uh, it before 2004 I yeah. did say that off air um, yeah. especially for the Hawks that one yeah um, I do remember 08 being quite strong again not maybe for necessarily the top end talent like I don't know off the top of my head who the best player of that draft is but I think there, for some reason I've got it in my head that there was a lot of good players that made I the grade. I think Michael Walters, he yep. went pick 55, I think, something, yeah, like, something that. like that. So it just shows you, again, you can find quality players at, um, at the deep end. For sure, absolutely. Um, but we'll start off at pick one. Um, and before we get, I guess, into the proper redraft, we'll do a little, like, go around the room and say who should go pick one. So for those who don't know, some of the guys... That that in contention for pick one, Luke Hodge was the the actual pick one, yep. and yep. he probably a makes worthy a, pick one most years, I'd say. Well, he makes a case for being the best pick one ever. Mm. Uh, if, off the top oh, of it's my probably head. between him and Nick Revolt. Yes, I yeah. would say. Yeah, for sure. But I think if you look at um, as I switch tabs here, Luke Hodge, uh, three hundred and forty six games, four flags, three as captain, and yep. two Norm Smith medals. Yep. Like it's almost probably could have been anyone. considered the best big game player of the modern era to a True. certain bloke called Dustin Martin decided to win three. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah, um, and then he, you know, obviously went to Brisbane and had a big impact there. But uh, yeah, so we're talking about guys like Gary Ablett Jr., Chris Judd, Luke Hodge, uh, all the top of the end yep. of this. Um, this draft I guess Lenny you can go first who do you think would be pick one if it was redrafted today um, would serious question would is Gary Oblett under father son picks here or is he on the open market uh, let's do it so that if we do the redraft now we'll do it under modern rules so okay. let's say they can match a bid for Gary Oblett Jr okay. so if you want to take him with pick one yep. you certainly can I, I would yep I, I'd certainly put a bid on him yep <laughs> See if they match it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Is Gary Ablett, like, would you go as far as to say he's the greatest player you've seen? Or is there, what's another contender for you? I think you said Buddy in the past as yeah, well. Yeah, but Buddy's probably the best player I've seen. Um, okay. Just purely for the position he played, the size, mm. he is, his athleticism, man. Probably also the fact that he's the last player to kick 100 goals in a year. I yeah. Think that's probably why I see him as just such a raw and exo- uh, the best player I've seen. For sure. Um, of course, Buddy was the 04 draft for anyone yep. listening who doesn't know that. So, um, who is another contender for you for this pick one? Uh, I would go with the best pure midfielder I've seen in Chris Judd. Mm. Yeah, I, I would agree with you. I think Judd and Ablett are probably one and two. I also yep. went Ablett, I think, just for... Uh, I guess both had longevity, but I think at the peak of his powers, Judd, when he was the best player I'd ever seen at that time... Yeah. That probably didn't last as long as someone like an Ablett who yeah. continued Are we talking that. talking about West Coast Judd here? Yeah, yeah. well, I, yeah. I mean, we, all of it. But I was yeah. referring to when I said that the peak of his powers, I think yeah. Judd at late West Coast yeah. was um, was number one for me. But I think what Ablett did over a longer period of time, um, and he played, you know, a fair few more games, I would imagine, as well. Uh, I think he just gets the edge. What about yourself? Would yeah, you? I've got Gablet at the top of my big board here. Like mm. He's just like... You can stick him on that, like especially if we're drafting for like the modern context. He's like that half forwardy, like dusty type that can go in the guts, do what you need him to do there. But also lurk in that half forward, kick you a few snags, that sort of thing. Mm. Yeah, for sure, I agree. Which um, is an invaluable role in these days for you. Like the best players in the league playing that role, like Dusty's, your Lockie Whitfield's playing that role. He's one of the best players in the league. A few other guys like that. Yeah. Um, I was just going to say, should we maybe start rolling through our top 25 to 30 picks? Um, Let's get this draft started. Yeah. Bush, would you like to go first? I presume you're going to go Gary Ablett. <laughs> yeah, I've just said I'd go Gary Ablett, but I'll preface my number one pick because if I was acting in this position, Fremantle originally had this pick, but 
Silly old Fremantle, they traded picks 1 and 36 in this draft for Luke McFarlane and, and I think it was Trent Crowe or something like that. Mm. But picks 1 and 36 in this draft was Luke Hodge, as we mentioned earlier, and pick 36 was Luke Mitchell. Oh, sorry, not Luke Mitchell, <laughs> Sam Mitchell. We know football. Yeah. <laughs> Sam Mitchell, sorry. I got him mixed up with his teammate Luke Hodge there. Yeah. And I just said he's Sam yeah. Hodge and Luke Mitchell. But yeah, that's one of the all-time howlers of draft history. Mm. But in this instance, we'll assume it's still... Hawthorne taking the pick. A little bit El Stanko, yep. as they say so, in Spain. Yep, I bid on Gary Ablett Jr. Yeah, nice one. Okay, let's assume that Gary Ablett Jr. gets matched yeah. because uh, Geelong have pick eight, and let's just say pick eight then goes to pick one. Yeah. Um, Seven right. points match up beyond that. We'll play that imaginary mathematics. Yeah. <laughs> At least you got um, McFarlane as part of that deal. It could have been yeah. worse because yeah. McFarlane is probably your greatest ever defender, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah so. I'd agree with that. Yeah. Yep. Um, all right. Well, you can have pick two if you like, Lenny. Okay. So Hawthorne are actually back on the board. You don't have to pay attention to which teams are picking, yeah. like with list needs and yeah. stuff. Um, yeah. Let's just go for general rankings yeah. if you like. I'd go uh, again the greatest pure midfielder I've seen in Chris Judd. Beautiful. Uh, I mean, that's all I'm going to leave it at. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Cool. All right. Sweet. Uh, yeah. I think we've covered the uh, the Judd Ablett comparison. Um, so that gives me the first, um, not live pick, but the first. Uh, Debatable pick, other than one. Ablett and Judd, who were yeah. clear number two, one and two um, between us all. I'm going to go with the original pick one and say Luke Hodge, um, purely for his resume, his longevity, 346 games, four premierships, three as captain, and two Norm Smith medalists. I think that just shades the guys behind him, although it is very, very difficult to overlook those guys, yeah. especially when some of them are pure midfielders, when it's always tempting to take a, a pure midfielder. Uh, long story short, St. Kilda, I'm going to take Luke Hodge um, and, uh, yeah what a player he would have been for them. That means you're on the board again for my beloved West Coast. Oh, well, in that case, I'm Ashley's just going gonna... <laughs> <laughs> No, I'll just take Lee Sambozo off the street. No, no, no. I'll, I actually had a couple of guys above Hodgie on my big board here, so I'll go with the guy I had at number three, Sam Mitchell. Ah. I think I just sort of had him, like, I think he's sort of, he's brown low, sort of gives him a bit of an edge. Like, he's got the same premiership, same amount of all Australians as Hodgie. An actual West Coast player as well at one point. Yeah, yeah that, that ties in nicely, I suppose, yeah. Do we remember him more as an eagle or as a hawk? <laughs> <laughs> I think eagle. <laughs> Nah, cool. Nah, good pick. Sam yeah. Mitchell is an amazing player. Uh, yeah. That gives you your beloved Fremantle you're on yeah. the board. Yeah, um, and I'm going to go with a bloke called Jimmy Bartell. Yeah. I think it's only him and Simon Black to have played over 300 games, to have won a Brownlow, and to have won a Norm. Mm. So. Wow, yeah. Uh, yeah, 305 games. Originally pick eight. So um, that was a really good selection by Geelong, who, um, as we'll talk about later, do extremely well in this draft. <laughs> yeah. um, pretty much build a premiership off this draft. Uh, I got St. Kilda again, so um, the pressure's on to pick another player. I'm not going to take into account the fact that I've picked Hodge, but it's nice that I'm going to go for a pure midfielder now and say Dane Swan is my next best available, um, who was, what, pick 58, if I'm not mistaken, played 258 games for the Collingwood Footy Club. That included a Brownlow medal, one flag, an MVP award, and five All-Australians. So, um, yeah, at times, Dane Swan was certainly the best player in the comp yeah. um, which you know some of these players who were outstanding maybe never reached that height as an individual at one point whereas I think Dane Swan at one point yeah. was literally the best player so yeah, yeah. Uh, you're up next with the West Coast Eagles again West Coast two in a row well I'll because I considering I took Sam Mitchell the other one he's a pure mid but it happens to match up with my big board anyway I'm going to take a goal kicking wizard an absolute <laughs> great player for Geelong over the years Stevie J Stevie J 286 games mostly for Geelong a bit at GWS at the end he had three All Australians and Norm Smith and three flags, so Incredible. can't go wrong with Stevie J. Especially he had something dynamic to the forward line compared to Mitchell, who's just a more crash and bashy midfielder type. We'll note as well that Geelong have three of the top seven picks yes. in this redraft, so uh, you're back on the board with yep. North Melbourne, Lenny. Well, they, I'm going to go with a bloke that did play some football for them, and that's Nick Del Santo. Oh, Ooh. interesting. That's uh, a couple lit names down on what I had, but I like it. Sorry, continue. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, that's okay. Um, I just think he just, I think at one point was the most skillful player in the comp. Um, yeah. I think people forget he did come third twice in the Brownlow. Mm. Uh, he came third that year that Cousins and Kerr decided to fight amongst each other for a Brownlow. Yeah. He just um, came in third. So, but yeah, and no, I think he's always just been a great player. Yep, yeah, I agree with that. Fair call. Uh, Melbourne Demons now pick a player that used to go by a form- another name. He was drafted as Brian Harris. Oh, yeah. He changed his name to Brian Lake uh, at some point in his career. Nobody knew who he was before he changed it to Lake, so not many people know that. Originally picked 71, so this is uh, the probably one of the biggest bolters 
um, out of the names we've listed so far other than the Swan. Yeah. 251 games across two clubs, the Dogs and the Hawks, of course. He won three flags in the, yeah. at the Hawks, one of them as a Norm Smith medalist, and he had two All-Australian uh, Guernseys as well. So incredible career from Brian Lake. Yeah. And the Bulldogs, the club he actually went to, uh, is next with Busher. I'm going to go with arguably the best ruckman of the year it's him or dane cox but i'm gonna go with my boy aaron sandalands from the dockers probably the best tap ruckman almost ever you could argue for sure like he's a guy that went rookie draft like not that well known bit of a raw prospect but he certainly panned out had a great career four australians and a couple of best and fairest for him yeah yep what well, it was rookie pick 33 as well um, yep and it's just like one of the best possible cases for when you pick like a scrawny, yeah. semi-athletic kid. Well, I guess Tallest player in AFL history when <laughs> yeah. he was taken. Yeah. Um, and then, although to be fair, you got Mason Cox, who's um, equally tall and yeah. nowhere near even half as good. Exactly. So uh, Sandy was a great footballer as well. Uh, that means you're up next with the yeah. pies, Lenny. Yep. Um, and I'm going to go with another former Saint in Lee Montagna. Nice. Just yep. a good outside player. Very skillful. And look, unfortunately, he didn't quite get that chip, but... I think he's still a great player nonetheless. Yep, I agree with you there. 287 games of pure stank in a good way. Um, that leaves me, James Kelly from the Geelong Footy Club. 313 games of football for three premierships was uh, you know, a regular face in that Geelong team that seemed unstoppable at one point. Um, he only had one All-Australian uh, Guernsey, which surprised me because he was a fantastic player, but it was a competitive yeah. sort of team there. So um, the St Kilda Saints, uh, who have had plenty of bites at the apple in this draft yeah. so far, are back on with Busher. And I'm going to take a guy that had a very long career. He sort of found his prime later than probably most of the guys in this draft, I'd say, and that's Matthew Boyd. Nice. Because, like, if you look at his All-Australians, his last one was in 2016, 2011, 2009, so he sort of hit it probably a bit later than some of these other guys. A few free best and fairest, a couple of All-Australian 40s, so he didn't necessarily make squad, but he was in the 40, and a flag, obviously. Yep. Uh, yeah, rookie pick 23, 292 mm. games. So yep. just another one of those players to add to the list. All right, Lenny, you're up with North Melbourne. Yep, and I'm going to go with another ex-rookie pick in Ben Russen. Ooh, Ooh. That's a fair way down on my list, but I like it. Yeah. Talk me through it. Um, one of the best centre-half backs in the competition. Uh, he was tough. He was actually pretty skillful coming out of defence, and I think... When Adelaide were going through that 2000s period and when they were really good, he was absolutely crucial to making them such a good team. Mm. Yep, I agree with that. Uh, one of those sort of like um, maybe unheralded, maybe underappreciated by opposition fans yeah. throughout his career. Didn't have the same big name sort of yeah. persona as a lot of the guys taken. Um, but the fact that he's picked 14 in this redraft is a huge um, feather in his cap. I'm going to say this player's kind of slipped to me a little bit. I think I'm pretty happy to take him here with pick 15, put Adelaide footy club, David Hale. He was originally picked seven. Yep. Um, he won three flags at uh, Hawthorne, of course, with the um, starting his career at North Melbourne. Um, and, uh, yeah, 237 games is a really good sort of, um, you know, resume. I think he was a really good player during yep. his time. And I think he's involved with Fremantle Footy Club. Yeah, he's one of our coaches, yep. assistant coaches. Yeah, seen him at Bunnings. Yep, nice. Good, good on him. That Bye bumps him. him up a few spots. <laughs> <laughs> um, just before you go on, Bush, I'll do a little recap of the top yep. 15 in case it's moving a little too fast. Um, so with pick one, we had Geelong match Gary Ablett Jr., as you'd imagine. Chris Judd and Luke Hodge then went second and third. And then Sam Mitchell and Jimmy Bartell rounded out top five. Fremantle taking Jimmy Bartell. That would have been nice. Ooh, yeah. um, St. Kilda then took Dane Swan before West Coast doubled up with Steve Johnson to go with Sammy Mitchell. Uh North then took Nick Del Santo and then Lake and Sanderlands rounded out the top 10. We then went Lee Montagna before James Kelly, Matthew Boyd, Ben Rutten, and then finally David Hale. And Hawthorne are back on the clock with pick 16. And I'm going to go with the original pick number two from this draft, Luke Ball. Yes, nice. He was an All-Australian, a best and fairest, and won a flag. Even though I don't know if this information from him is correct i don't think he won a flag in 2010 to be honest yeah he did yeah he went to collingwood oh i had him in my head as a saint yeah yeah yeah. so that's probably where i got a bit confused but okay i didn't realize he'd switch to the pies at that point yeah because he um what had lost it in 2010 and then he joined collingwood and then they somehow snagged the flag yes Uh, yeah yeah yeah, that's right because they um they he was one of the few players other than maybe nick stevens to walk out on a club like they well, it wasn't not so much he who walked out, but they were, they failed to facilitate a trade who was out of contract. I think St Kilda offered like pick twenty three as a trade in like two thousand nine, two thousand and ten, um, 
sorry, no, Collingwood offered pick 23 to St Kilda. They declined and he walked into the national draft and went pick 30 and then he became a premiership player <laughs> against St Kilda for Collingwood in 2010. So... There you go. All um, right. Yeah, interesting little tidbit on Luke Ball, who put together a pretty good career. And he was one of those players um, at the risk of banging on. Was was kind of sandwiched in between Jordan, uh, Jordan Hodge, and, yeah. Yeah. and like he was always sort of compared yeah. to those guys, which is a bit I unfortunate. Think what killed him? I don't know if people noticed, but he suffered from osteitis pubis. That's right. Um, so if you've seen his draft highlights, he was like Jard. He had the speed, right. he had the burst to get out, but then his OP mm. sort of... He became a Jard at Carlton much quicker than... Yes. So he could have still been that explosive midfielder, which would have probably made a lot more people appreciate him. I yeah. don't know if that's the right word, mm. but... Look, as Bush has said, he's still a damn good player. For sure, for sure. Yeah, that's a very good career he's put together. Mm. Uh, you are now on the board with uh, Geelong. Like yep, it. and I'm going to go with a bloke who I reckon a lot of... He was a bit of a fan favourite, just tough, and that's big Campbell Brown. Campbell Ooh. Brown, yes, I like it. Yep, another player to play at two clubs, but of yep. course uh, won a premiership at uh, his original club, Hawthorne, yep. and then he went to the Gold Coast Suns, and yep. what was he, didn't he smash Stephen S- May's yep. jaw? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yep. Yeah, he... Uh, Pretty like much his, like his old man. I was going to say, yeah, his old man. My dad tells me stories about his old man, so yeah. Um, cool, I'm on the board now with Essendon. This is where we're getting, uh, not obscure, but certainly moving into some names we were not superstars, but definitely yeah. good players. Yeah. I'm going to say Jared Waite. Uh, he was originally a father-son uh, for the Carlton Footy Club yep. uh, at pick 46. So under those rules back then, I think you, the father-son would be like, if you match the bid, it, it would... Um, you only had to give up pick 40 or pick 46. It was, it was like your third round or whatever yeah, it was. Yeah, wh- like whatever that. your third round it was. They've changed the rules about four times since then. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Gary Ablett was also pick 40 and Jared Waite pick 46. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 244 games, 377 goals across two clubs. He had a pretty good goal scoring record and maybe didn't quite hit his full potential through injury and stuff like that. Um, and also playing at a butthole club, Carlton, <laughs> during that period where they were struggling. Boom, Dylan Hayward. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't mean generally Carlton are terrible. I just mean uh, at that time they were struggling and that was partly why he probably didn't fulfill his potential. That's yeah. all I meant. Uh, you're next with Brisbane. Well, I've had a guy that I really rate, obviously, because he's a, fr- a former Fremantle player, but I think he was quite a good player, Paul Medhurst. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. I did not even have him in my top 35. I like Oof. it. But yeah, he's had an All-Australian. He was a leading goal kicker for us for three seasons. Apparently, he has an Anzac medal up his sleeve, I believe. Yeah. When he went to Collingwood, he won an Anzac medal. There you go. He's a very good player, quite productive, yep. good long career. Two hundred. Oh, sorry, he only had 168 games, actually. But still, that's a pretty good long career by most standards. When this you draft, say, it's probably a bit more... Yeah. Yeah. When you say Paul Medhurst, I just think of um, the first ever derby. I saw Fremantle win where he kicked a snap over his left shoulder to win the game. Yeah, he um, had a good sense for the goals, old Medi. Yeah, it made me want to cry. I think I actually left the room at that point. I was only about eight <laughs> years old. Um, <laughs> We've all had a cry when we lose. <laughs> <laughs> it's a derby. Yeah. Um, sweet. All right, you're next up with Hawthorne. And I'm going to go with a very... I'm going to say underappreciated player in Brent Riley, who yep. went to Adelaide originally. I think he would have played close to 200 games, maybe over. Um, 203. 203. He was, he was sort of like that defensive midfielder that probably allowed guys like McLeod and Rashudo to be more offensive. Um, and yeah, I thought he was a bit like Benny Rudden, really just crucial to Adelaide being such a good team during the 2000s. Yes. Yep, I like it. That's a good nomination. That means I'm back on the board with St Kilda. This is a tough one. I'm actually, for the first time now, looking at my board, and I'm like, I can't really split about five blokes here. Yeah. I might go for a bit of Eagles bias and pick Quinton Lynch, oh, because yeah. I don't think he's clearly worse than any of the other guys around this range, but um, I'll knock him in. He was a rookie pick 19, and again, probably one of the least talented players <laughs> I've ever seen. I had him the highest out of the guys we had left. Okay, cool. I had him above a couple of guys that are already gone as well, actually, the old Q-tip. Oh, there you go. Um, yeah, so he played 274 games for two clubs, mostly West Coast, of course. 341 goals, one flag, and in that flag year, um, despite not being the most talented guy, and admittedly with a great midfield, kicked 65-plus goals or something like that, 68, 65. So um, did well to get the most out of himself, and he put together a very good career. Yeah. Yeah, you're next with West Coast again. With the next one, it's a guy who's like, cause I'm getting a bit young to sort of remember these guys at their peak, but I've gone with Nathan Bock. He's a name that sort of I remember hearing a lot when I was young. He... Was a pretty solid play. Was an All Australian one year. One of best and fairest. Mm-hmm. Yep. So yeah, pretty solid player. You're getting there, I think. Another Crows player to leave and join. Oh, 
yeah, one of the many Crows players. I think he was kind of the start of when Adelaide started to lose players regularly. Like, they lost Phil Davis after that. But he yeah. went to join the Gold Coast as an original player as well. Yeah. Um, oh, my pick. Yeah, yeah sorry. sorry. Yeah, yeah, you got too long. Yeah. Sorry. Um, just having a quick look. I think maybe yeah. someone like a David Roden could yeah, come in nice, here. Yeah, nice, nice. Uh, you know, he was that elusive, probably small forward that could go in the midfield. He had a bit of speed, some good skill, and... Jay's become a very good goal umpire. Yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> and a very good dancer. Yes. <laughs> um, yep, cool, sweet. Uh, I've got Geelong again. And I think the best player I've got left on my list is Adam Schneider. Ooh. Played 228 games for 259 goals as a kind of small forward. Uh, started his career at... Um, actually, I'm, did he start his career at Sydney or St Kilda? Which one did he end at? He won a flag with Sydney. Saints, wasn't he, at one stage? He certainly was, but did he start at Sydney? I think he started at Sydney. Yeah, I think he ended at Saints, because I remember him banging that flaggy contending team at Saints. 100%. I think he, um, yeah, he was certainly in that 06, 05 kind of Eagles rivalry Sydney team, but I just, yeah, he got a mental block then. He ended at St. Kilda. Either way, um, pesky little player, really talented, um, and kicked a number of painful goals on West Coast during that era as well. So, yeah, he gets my pick. And for those who don't remember, he was the one basically giving Collingwood the bird after GWS beat them in the preliminary final oh, yeah. in the coach's box. So. Oh, was, it, was that him, was it? Yeah, yeah right. Far out, that's funny. Yeah, he was a bit of a character. Yeah. I've gone with, for Melbourne here, I've gone with Mark Jamar, who actually, so he actually matches up with the team there, so that yeah. works out nicely. He was a very good ruckman, one-time All-Australian. He was a bit on the smaller side, probably by modern ruck standards, but probably in the area, he was probably considered a big ruck at 197. Mm, true. He, uh, yeah. yeah, he uh, was rookie pick six as well. Yep. For 160 games, that was um, yeah. a good haul. Nice return. So that's 25 picks. How are you guys feeling about stretching to 30? Yeah, yeah I've got some. Give it a crap. Yeah, I was going to say, I've yeah. still got a few names on here that I think are worthy. So, yeah, um, worth yeah, a mention. Cool to take yep. pick 26, Melbourne. Yep, and I'm just going to go with a bit, since you went with a crowd favourite with Quinton Lynch, I'm just going to go with the other crowd favourite from this draft class in Lewis Roberts Thompson, oh, oh, next known on my as board. LRT. Yes, yeah, like... And I'm purely just going with him because he was a crowd favourite. Yeah, And I knew yeah. we'd be in trouble if we didn't pick him. Yeah, no, very <laughs> solid player. Two premierships at Sydney. Um, and again, like Schneider, played against the Eagles during that uh, 05, 06 period. So a player I remember quite well. Um, all right, that leaves me next. Pick 27, Collingwood. I reckon the next best player could be Andrew Carrazzo. R- rookie pick five. Again, more like a really good clubman for 194 games at Carlton who uh, went through a rebuild and then came back a little bit while he was there. Um, pretty pesky sort of talented player without being a superstar. I think he would be a very solid pick in the second round. Yep. Uh, you've got Sydney. With this next pick, I'm going to go a guy who is probably more known for the second time he got drafted. Like, I didn't even know he was drafted in this draft until I'd done my research, but J-Pod, mm-hmm. James Podsy yeah. Adley. He's a crafty forward, handy guy to have, got a flag up his sleeve. Yep. Yeah, three clubs yep. um, for only 104 games. Uh, yeah, people probably didn't know that he used to play, was on Collingwood's list originally um, before winning a flag at Geelong. I only knew him as like a guy that was drafted, like the oldest ever at the time, mature age draft year or whatever. Mm. Like he got those big Yeah, raps. I think that's how everyone sort of yeah. learned to know who he was, yeah. yeah. All right, with your, your final selection here, pick yep. 29. Um, so I'm going to go with a guy who I believe was on West Coast's list during that 05 06 period, and Mark Seavey. Ooh, he was next for me too. Ooh, nice. We nice. just we just know we have a yeah. we're going to pick. <laughs> he uh, ended up at Sydney as well. Yeah. Um, got traded for pick 22, and uh, who did we take? I think we took Jerick Whedon with that pick. So yeah. yeah, no, Sydney probably did better out of that deal. But yeah, a Premiership player, so yeah. you can't argue with that. All uh, right. Oh, this is the final pick of the top 30. There's some good names here. Um, I'll, I'll just list a few of the players that I've still got left. Sam Power, Ashley Hansen, Polak, who was pick four. Okay. Xavier Clark, pick five. Ashley Sampy, pick six. Stephen Armstrong, I think, for his premiership makes the list. But I'm going to say Rick Ladson is my final oh, pick. Oh, yes. Uh, by virtue of the fact that he's the only player left on this list with an All-Australian, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Um, 125 games, one All-Australian. So, um, one yeah. flag. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, I didn't actually write down the flag. Um, unless I've written out that down wrong, I'm sure somebody will correct me. Mm-hmm. But I think he's an All Australian player, so 
there you go. That's our top 30. Any other names on either anyone yeah. else's big boards? I've still got Brad Miller, who's a guy who had a pretty good career yeah, sure. for Melbourne. Yeah. Graham Polak, who's been mentioned. Xavier Clark. Ashley Sampy, another good eagle. Who, yeah. Sampy's like our, one of our greatest lost talents who probably would have been a long-term player, just had yeah. a few issues and couldn't yeah. quite stay in the park. Where and Jason start? Graham as well was the last one I had yeah. on my board yeah. that didn't get um, him drafted. Probably no. just a couple of blokes who you guys haven't mentioned. Um, I'd look at maybe even like a Matt Maguire, yep. who was that solid defender up at Brisbane and St Kilda that's right um, Charlie Gardner who's now uh, Sydney's general uh, footy operations manager and, right? um, and he's also he got his own hospital, hospital. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ashley Hanson did you say I did say Hanson yeah. Yeah. yeah Mark McGough who won an Anzac Day medal I think in his debut or one of his very yeah, first right. games wow and Andrew Welsh who played about 160 odd games so. yeah well, I think Welsh is in the media now if yeah. I'm not mistaken so yeah, yeah. there you go Cool. So that is a really strong top 30, uh, headed by Gary Ablett all the way down to Rick Ladson, Mark Seavey. Um, none of those players that we picked have less than 100 games of experience, um, and I don't even want to add up all the premierships. <laughs> There's a lot of 200, 300 gamers in that list as well, oh, yeah. um, which is pretty spectacular. I guess um, before we wrap up, we can maybe take a closer look at you know some of those particularly bargain picks. As, as yeah. we said before this pod, like... The rookie draft in particular, I w- without even looking at it, I can tell you that this would be the most like bountiful rookie draft yeah. that's ever happened. It's even more so, like proportionately than the national draft. This rookie draft was insane. Um, was there any players in particular that come to mind for the rookie draft for you? Uh, for me personally, oh uh, yeah, if you, you start. Yeah, I'd probably say Sanderlands. I know mm-hmm. Bush wouldn't say that, but oh look, I think he rivaled. Dan Cox is probably the best ruck of the modern era. Mm. Um, I can't split both of them. I know you're probably going to go Sandy and you're going to go Cox. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, I can't split them. I think they were both fantastic rucks and that's why I think Sandy's probably the best rookie pick from this draft. 100%. Sandy was probably the best tap ruckman. Cox was better around the field, so I think that's probably yeah. how you sort of split them. But yeah. Stylistically those, very different, yeah. so it's quite hard to compare apples and oranges. But I think Cox was the revolutionary ruck of his era. Yeah. That's why he's like The regard. modern rucks are more like Dan Cox. Let's, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, probably the way of looking like at it. like a Grundy type is more yeah. of the Cox mold, so to speak. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what that means. You love a good Cox mold, don't you? <laughs> This is getting a little off. Man, <laughs> <laughs> um, Sweet. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, some of the other names here, I think Matthew Boyd was a player that you took yeah. early in this redraft. Yep. So where, t- where did we take him? Uh, pick 13 with St. Kilda. Yep. He was originally a rookie pick 23. Yep. Quentin Lynch I took late. Uh, and you had Ben Rutten as yep. well in there. And Quite there early Rutten picks. was yep. taken. Yeah, yeah exactly. 14 or so. Yeah, yeah, true. Um and then on top of that, in terms of just late picks, Brian Lake, as I alluded to, one on two. Uh, sorry, one Norm Smith medalist, two All Australians. Pick seventy one. Adam Schneider, pick sixty. Sam Mitchell, thirty six. Yep. That seems counted crazy that now. yourself. Swanee, yeah. pick fifty eight. Picks, yeah, exactly. It's hard to. You can see why someone like Sam Mitchell would go late in a draft, couldn't you? Because he's yeah. just like a small, slow yeah. inside mid, yeah. like or inside out mid. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to like, say the upside sort of thing. In yeah, his you game, feel yeah. like if he was an eighteen year old now, he'd probably go late. Yeah. you know what I mean and then he turns out to be a, a sensational player yeah. um, sorry were you about to say something uh, no I was even just going to say even someone like uh, Lee Montagna who goes pick 37 and mm. Stevie Johnson who went pick 24 like yeah. they've both turned out to be top 10 picks or top 15 picks so. exactly yep anyone that comes out to mind as a few howler picks I'm gonna, I'll well, probably besides n- Ron Weasley <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Weasley's got himself a howler <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we're not virgins. Um, <laughs> <sweet. laughs> now, nah, so um, speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to nominate. Uh, it's, it's harsh to say a howler pick, but just considering the strength of this draft, someone like a Luke Molan at pick nine, who never played a game for the Demons, um, yeah. when you had Brent Riley, Nick Del Sando, and James Kelly go not long yeah. after that Melbourne. Yeah. Typically, you just look at that and go, "What Classic a Melbourne, Melbourne. draft!" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, Ashley Watson played seven games, originally pick 14. Barry Brooks, the same, one pick after. Didn't play for the power, ended up playing for St Kilda. And you had guys like Ladson and, and James Kelly again uh, not there. And I think one that sticks out for West Coast is, uh, I believe, we were closely considering James Bartell over Ashley Sampy. Yeah. And um, with pick six, we ended up taking the local talent, Ashley Sampy, who was super talented, like yeah. not unlike a Willie Rioli, I think, in terms of what he 
had the potential to produce. Well, but just look at his mark of the year when he just yeah. jumped over. Uh, was it Melbourne? Yeah, it was Melbourne. And he yeah. just took that massive hanger. Mm, true. Yeah, that was just a little taste of like what that guy was capable of. He um he won us a few games in just a, a short career as well. So, yeah. That was, uh, that was a burn, but yeah. What about teams, I guess, that did well? Um, I'm sure a few come to mind, Lenny. Why don't you start us off? Uh, probably the big ones, Geelong. Mm-hmm. I think they, <laughs> they picked up Bartel, Kelly, Stevie J. A little bloke you might be wary of him called Gary Ablett Jr. Um, <laughs> Is he related to Nathan Ablett? <laughs> <laughs> they might be brothers. <laughs> um, but yeah, and look, you can just see that was the base of their premiership. Yeah, 100%. And it's the same with Hawthorne who picked up Hodge, Ladson, Brad, Campbell Brown, mm. Mitchell, and you know, that's also their core base from away and then 13, 14 and 15. So sure. it shows if you draft well, you can build a base for a good premiership team you can turn it over in one or two drafts i think we saw that with the bulldogs to a lesser extent as well when um when when they won in 16 so much of their uh the guys doing the heavy lifting with the guys drafted in the last three seasons obviously they had good mature players um but then you know like your caleb daniels your bond and pelly's all played really important parts for that team um who knows to see like how that's going to project in the future um would you like to take us to well, St Kilda? That yeah, was I was going to say, because I did say on my big board when we were talking before, I had six, I think, St Kilda guys in my top 30 wow. or so. Wow. So, yeah, the, obviously they had Nick Del Sano, Lee Montana, Luke Ball, they're the headliners of that group. Yeah. But then even solid role players like... Schneider, yeah, Clark, and Matt Maguire. Yeah, even J- Jason Graham out of... Oh, there you go. Yeah, years, of yeah. course. Uh, but I think uh, Xavier Clark Xavier Clark's another one as well. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I'll tr- yeah, yeah, I had Clark here. Um, yeah. Did Graham start his career at Brisbane, though? I think uh, he did. Yeah, I'm not too sure. I just knew he played for the Saints, so I just thought it was right. going from other smooth. He's enough. a Saint. Yeah. I, yeah, think yeah. You, I think you're right. Yeah, he might yeah, have. He might not have started there. I just sort of knew his name. Went, yeah, he played yeah. for the Saints when I can remember. For so. sure. No, he did play a fair bit of footy for them as yeah. well during that period. Um, any other teams, I guess? I think you were saying something well, I about... I think West Coast and Ferro both had good drafts when you look at it. Like mm. West Coast, they picked up Judd, who, as I've said several times already, is the best pure midfielder I've seen. And when he was at West Coast, I... I thought he was the best player in the competition by an absolute straight. For sure. Um, Ashley Sampy was a little dynamic small forward. Bit of a shame he only played 80 odd games, could have played more. Yep. Mark Seavey was a very serviceable ruckman. Ashley Hansen was a pretty good centre half forward. Mm. Um, and the big Q stick was also a bit of a fan favourite and could just kick the goals. Actually, that's a good point. When you add all that up, a lot of those guys played in that flag, 06. Yeah. yeah I think I think even Seavey played in the flag. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's about four or five premiership players. Sampy was not one, but... Yeah. Yeah, good point. I didn't, yeah. didn't think about that. And then, Fred, despite Freo deciding to trade away pick one yeah. and pick 36, um, look, Graham Pollock still played about 111 games for Freo, I think, mm. off the top of my head. Solid role player. Yeah. Madhurst, dynamic small forward again. Yep. Luke Webster, about another 100 games for Freo. And um, a big bloke who's pretty hard to miss, Aaron Sanderland, <laughs> also picked <laughs> up. So, look, both WA teams uh, did well. Just a bit of a shame that Freo didn't have pick one and we didn't pick up someone like a Judd or a Hodge. I know, right? Yeah, I mean, Judd, if Judd... Uh, I know the Eagles, again, this is one of those things that is told as a story, but I think the Eagles were considering Judd or Polak uh, yeah. because we needed a tall and we decided yeah. to go against the need and pick the best player we thought available. So, And I think um, this was actually confirmed by his manager, um, Paul Connors, who was saying he was trying to get uh, West Coast to take Polak because Fair was going to do not pick Judd with the next pick and then afterwards Judd was going to go to St Kilda is that right there you go oh well fuck Judd Um, (laughs) (laughs) I'm just kidding kidding. Um, kind of no no I actually don't mind Chris Judd at all Um, but yeah I was just going to say that's the difference between us winning a flag and not probably if we take Polak instead of Judd as good as that Eagles midfield was anyway um, you have to think Judd is the one point difference between us and Sydney easily so Um, yeah I'll ne- mention a team it's hard to really go through and say who had a bad draft I'll, I'll, I'll highlight Melbourne here because they had a funny draft where they had three picks in the top 26 that they got not much out of so you had Luke Molan never play a game in that top 10 which is a strong top 10 yeah. Stephen Armstrong played 43 games for them but then went off won a flag at West Coast yeah. uh, Aaron Rodgers played two games and then they kind of made up for a little bit with Brad Miller who you mentioned earlier yeah. with pick yeah. 55 played 157 games yeah. and then Jay Ma in the rookie draft they, they kind of salvaged it a little bit Aaron Rodgers moved on some, to some good things in the NFL though they nah. did, <laughs> they did <laughs> <laughs> might be in the Super Bowl yeah that's funny um, <laughs> yeah, that's funny, Bush. <laughs> Thanks, man. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, no, nah, so that I think that wraps up um, a little bit of a 
a deep dive into the 2001 draft. This is like a long, drawn-out version of um, all the, the redraft videos that we'll be doing on the channel. But, um, yeah, no, it was good to um, to get stuck into what is a fascinating draft in terms of how much talent. We really haven't seen anything like it since, which is no. incredible. Good fun. Was yeah. hard, bit of fun. Yeah, let us know in the comments if you enjoyed this redraft. We can probably do more of these over the, the future if yeah. people respond well because it is, yeah, it's a fun topic. Lenny, thank you for joining us. No worries. You Thanks are for the, having me again. You're the resident draft guru oh, of... Um, Thank you. True footy. So yeah, no, nah, it's good to have your your insight as well. Um, yeah, I guess for the listeners, um, stay subscribed, please. Um, now, nah, obviously, we'll be ramping up the footy stuff throughout February and certainly March. You'd hope yeah. the footy stuff would be yeah. back. Praying for no COVID interruptions, but um, obviously, we'll see. Yeah. So, thanks, guys. Make sure you uh, you like the video if you liked it, and we'll see you in the next one. Tell us who you'd take with pick one. Well, yeah. tell us your top five in the comments. So that's probably nice. Yeah, little, what he said. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice, little, nice way to draw up some comments. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right. Thanks, guys. We'll see you in the next one.